This is the third and last part of this short series on what makes a great photograph. If you've watched the first two videos, you'll know we've reached a definition of what a great photograph is. And I'm gonna just let you read that for the next 25 seconds or so. So to summarise, great photographs are made by great photographers. Great photographers are consistent. They create images which are purposeful. Their images affect the emotions of others. Their photographs speak to a wider audience. However, great photographs generally do not just happen. They are created by photographers who have a consistent style. And that's what this video is all about. I want to show you work by four photographers. Two of them are classics in the sense that their work is known throughout the world. Two of the photographers are far more contemporary. They both work in the UK currently and they produce very different but I would argue beautiful work which is consistent in style. And style is really what it's all about. As I'm prone to do, I ask people in Facebook groups what their photographic style was. In a sentence, what is your photographic style? Most people said random, eclectic. A few made attempts at more meaningful engagement with the question. But actually, that pretty much sums up most people's photographic experience. We photograph what's in front of us. We photograph the things that we're interested in at the time. If we develop a style, it's something that's almost an afterthought for most of us. And that's really quite interesting because great photographers, really world-class photographers, all have a consistent style. And they have a look which is recognizable by the vast majority of people who are interested in photography. The first of these four photographers is Edward Weston. He's been called one of the most innovative and influential of American photographers, one of the masters of 20th century photography. Although over his 40 year career, he photographed many, many different subjects, there is something about his work which actually is very, very identifiable. His focus was on the people and the places of the American West, and in the examples I'm giving you, on very, very distinctive still life photographs. Have a look, three examples. The second of the four photographers is David Bailey. His work in the 1960s uh, revolved around the worlds of fashion and celebrity portraiture. His photographs are characterised by stark backgrounds and dramatic lighting effects. He transformed British fashion photography from a sort of chic but reserved stylization to something that was far more youthful and direct. Bailey's pictures 
are recognisable all over the world. And during uh, the lockdown of uh, March 2020, he started printing up some of his pictures uh, to great commercial success. He's made a lot of money out of some old work, but it's beautiful, beautiful work and people still want it. My third photographer is Lisa Visa. She's a contemporary portrait photographer operating out of the UK at the moment. I first noticed her work uh, at an exhibition about five years ago and it completely stunned me. The very, very distinctive lighting and editing techniques that she used make her work extremely important to her clients and they capture uh, images of the young people she photographs in a way that I've never seen anybody else do it before. She has uh, a style which is characterised by uh, plain backgrounds, desaturated images, emphasis on the eyes, absolutely stunning and amazing work. My fourth photographer is my good friend Roy Barry. He's an experimental photographer who got a first class degree in photography and is now working on his Master of Arts degree in art practice. He's uh, an award winning photographer, he's been exhibited a number of times and for me his work epitomises experimental photography uh, at this stage. Uh, I've could have chosen many many of his pictures but I've just chosen the following three because I just love them so much. I've already mentioned uh, that I came across Lisa Visa's work about five years ago. The British Institute of Professional Photography had uh, an exhibition and competition running. Um, some of my students entered the junior section of the competition. Um, amazingly, uh, well amazing to everyone else, uh, they won first and both runners-up prizes in the competition. When I was there I was looking at the work on the wall and a voice from a local photographer said I thought they were your students, you can tell they're your students because they photograph exactly the way that you do. I thought that was quite interesting because my students photograph the way that I do because that's the way that I've taught them. Although at this stage in their career their style is very similar to my own, it is distinctly different, but isn't it interesting that someone could spot who the tutor was of these three young women. Uh, here's a little picture of them uh, collecting the certificates. Here are three photographs that show what I mean. First is of a fox, then a zebra, then a lynx. This is my style. This is how I take photographs. This is what is demonstrably my type of photograph. That's not to say you should do it. You don't have to co do what I do or what anybody else does. My students in the past have copied my style uh, to a degree and got quite a lot of success through doing it. 
from the pictures of the three students of mine, you may pick up from two of them that I like tight photographs. I'm an advocate of the Robert Capra approach. If your photograph isn't good enough, you are not close enough. Of course, if you know your history of photography, you'll know that didn't quite work out very well for Capra in the end. But still as a photographic technique, I believe that your photographs should be very, very tight. That's to say they should exclude any detail that you do not want in your photograph. So I'm going to offer you, well, five photographs of mine. The first one is my interpretation of a portrait. Uh, according to some uh, theories, the dominant eye of the portrait should be in the centre of the shot. Take that to the logical extreme and you end up with this picture. The second photograph is similar in some respects. It's not actually a portrait, it's more a monumental uh, photograph in the sense that it's photographing a monument. This photograph is actually of the death mask of the pop impresario Malcolm McLaren. This is actually on his grave in the Highgate Cemetery and again I've excluded everything from the shot that I do not want in the shot. I'm going to leave it with the last three photographs grouped together. Here are three photographs that show what I mean. First is of a fox, then a zebra, then a lynx. This is my style. This is how I take photographs. This is what is demonstrably my type of photograph. That's not to say you should do it. You don't have to coat do what I do or what anybody else does. Your job, what every student of photography's job is really, is to develop your own style. Don't copy me, don't copy David Bailey, don't copy Roy Barry. Go out there and forge your own style so that in the future people say, I know who took that photograph. I know where that photograph comes from in terms of style. If you can do that, if you can become recognisable as a photographer, then you've developed your own style. Then you have the opportunity to try and make great photographs. It's potentially within us all but we have to develop it for ourselves. And that's where I'm going to leave this. Go out, take pictures, take lots of pictures. The first 10,000 pictures you take are your worst. Cartier Bressel. Then look at those pictures, see what works best for you. Go out and take some more in that style until people know you for a type of photograph, know you for a type of photographic endeavour. They know your intent, they know your understanding of the subject because you've demonstrated it over and over and over again. That's what makes a great photograph a great photographer.